Pinch Owls here. Welcome back to Pinch Owls Garage. We're back on the Patreon built VR6 Turbo build. And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to do the entire cooling system. So let's get to work because this is Pinch Owls Garage. First things first, as always here, we're going to make sure our area is clean. We're going to make sure the engine's mounted correctly so it doesn't fall down. And we're going to pretty much move forward. Now, this video is brought to you by Eurotuning. So, enjoy a quick segue with our sponsor. Eurotuning.com, one of the best sites that I can think of right off the top of my head when I want to work on my car. And on today's project, since it's the Patreon built VR6, gotta go to Eurotune.com to get our parts. And it's simple. I'll show you how to do it. You're gonna select your make. Since it's a Mark IV and it's a Jetta, so we're gonna go down to Jetta. MK499 to 2005. Now, what model? It's just a standard Jetta, it's not a GLI, with a 12 valve VR6 engine. And then we're gonna go to Go. And then everything you need is here. And what's funny, I actually just ordered an exhaust from uh, Neurotuning. I also ordered a bunch of other little goodies from them because, again, it, life is so simple. Just shop for your parts and everything that you need. Now, everything that we purchased for our VRT build came from Neurotuning.com. There are some parts that obviously we can't get there because Eurotuning doesn't carry a lot of custom stuff for uh, big turbo applications. However, everything we needed to build the engine came from Eurotuning.com. Thanks again everybody for watching this and let's get back to work at Pinchy Al's Garage. Now we got that out of the way, now let's get to work on wrenching. So, for the cooling system on a 12 valve VR6, there's not much to be honest, there's just a few things. I'm gonna take this off of here. I just I just put it on here. It's just messing around with stuff. Um, so this is the oil cooler with the actual giant bolt that bolts onto it that holds it in place. But we're gonna walk you through all of this so you don't worry don't have to worry about what goes where, okay? But on the cooling system, you have the oil cooler, oil filter housing the crack pipe or the coolant pipe and then we have the flange that goes right here on the head and then we're also going to do the water pump on over here on this side that is the entire extent of your cooling system that goes on the engine itself there's more that goes with it after that but that's when we're done getting the engine in the car back in the car and all that but for right now to get your cooling system ready for installation we need the pipe that goes across here, housing, oil cooler with this giant thing here, and water pump, all right? So first things first, on our oil cooler, there is a gasket that goes on here, and it's a big round one that has these two little notches on it. These notches go anywhere around the diameter of this oil cooler. And then this guy right here, the bolt that holds everything down, has a square like flat gasket that goes around here it stretches around here it goes on here pretty snug guys so remember that but it goes around this and it goes on this side okay not the side with the little notches on here but on this side that's flat it goes just like that okay now this guy we don't torque it down until we actually have the housing installed but this guy we're just going to put in and it goes down by hand. Now you'll see I'm holding this kind of at an angle. And uh, the reason for this is that the coolant pipe that goes across here, you need these at an angle to reach the hose that goes, well, this hose right here goes here and there's one that goes on the actual pipe itself. So remember that. Now prior to installing anything else, there is a sensor that goes right here on the back of the oil cooler. This is a knock sensor, so don't forget to install that before you start putting everything else in. You got two of them. You got one here and then one on the other side of the block. On the back. So 
don't forget that because if you forget it, you're gonna end up have, having some uh, check engine lights, all right? That's why you'll see the surface is nice and clean because it's ready for a sensor. Okay, so the knock sensors, you're gonna have a short wire and a long wire, a white or a brown. The white one goes on the front and the brown one goes on the back of your motor. Now your wiring for this is this way to the right, just so you guys know. Okay, so I would have it going that way. See the back one. Now the one that's on the back goes to the goes around the block uh, to the front of your harmonic balancer this way, if you guys can see, it comes around this way. So you're gonna have the, uh, the sensor pointing in this direction. And that's the brown sensor because you have the pigtail that goes across the top of the head and over and plugs in like right here on top. The pigtail for this goes down from the harness here and plugs in down below, kind of like that, okay? And then you also have a crank sensor down here at the bottom, okay guys? So our next step is the filter housing that goes right here with these two holes. The gasket on this one kind of looks like a, a, a number eight. And it just sits there in place. Make sure you press it all around. Over time, this thing will get so flat, it looks like a square. It's kind of weird. There's three holes. Two, one, two, and three, okay? the oil cooler lines up with that. That's why we don't install the oil cooler yet until the housing's on. Should have cleaned this bracket. I gotta clean it when I'm done here. So I'm gonna take the uh, I can't take the cooler off with the block. Maybe I can here, hold on. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the housing here has a brace that goes at an angle. That's where the filter angles on. So you gotta make sure the filter sits, I mean the cooler sits in that angle. Okay, not the filter, the cooler. And you see what I mean? Once I get this all hand tightened, you'll see. 
So obviously you can see the filter, I mean, jeez, the, the cooler. So I can wiggle it left and right. When I, I hold it to the left as far as I can, and then make that snug. Okay, that's where it's gonna sit. That's where um, the filter is supposed to be. I mean, the cooler. I'm gonna raise it up higher. So I don't like how it's hitting the, the bolt here. Because we're gonna put a rubber hose on that and it's gonna rub on that. So I, I wasn't a fan of that right now, right off the bat. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more. But that's how it's supposed to sit. That brace right there is telling you the angle that the cooler has to sit at. Okay. So now that we have the oil cooler, the housing mounted, now the next step and the knock, sen uh, the knock sensor back here, we have what they call the crack pipe. Now, this is all dry, okay? Um, so I, what I like to do prior to installation is uh, on the pipe itself, uh, a little bit of a WD-40, just pop it in. It just helps you with the installation. So some WD, spray a little bit on here. <laughs> oh man. One time this is broken. Oh. This WD doesn't work. bearing grease. And all I'm going to do is just kind of put it around the o-ring. All this is for me to do is so it slides into the groove a lot better. Now on this, this is a, a Velt Sport uh, hard pipe. I got this from Eurotuning.com and uh, it's, it's great because this is probably the more affordable version of the metal pipe that's on there. And I think it has the best look because I'm not a big fan of polished ones and just a standard like, this is just a nice standard cast one and it's, it's nice. It's a really, really well put together part. So you get that and then just like manhandle it in there, you know? you guys what before you know having a heart attack and then coming back to working on cars after like two weeks or three weeks it's tough doctor told me I got to rest for three months and this is how I do it <laughs> making content you know I don't know man I'm not a big fan of just, just chilling at home what is about me, but I just don't know how to do that. there. 
Okay. Oh. It's not all the way in, but we'll get it all the way in just a minute. Um, cause this hose, this this uh this line right here, this one has to connect underneath here, and then this one has to connect up here. Let me confirm that, but I think that's my way. Okay, wrong. <laughs> okay, so the back line connects up here. The line that sits in the front connects to the block. So here to the block and then here to the pipe, okay? That pipe sits in this direction. So I have another VR6 over there that I'm using as reference that we just pulled, so. sit like that that's how it's supposed to sit so this hose this one goes to here this one goes to the block okay next is the coolant flange that goes on here on the block itself Okay, so we went with Euro Twinning's casted uh, coolant flange for this build too. So you'll see this is all metal. It's got a thermostat and a brand new O-ring here. It's got a new gasket that goes from here to the block. Okay, now this guy has a very specific orientation, so you guys know that. And you'll see here, this is where the, the, uh, the crack pipe or the coolant pipe goes into, okay? Problem. My fault. We put a little bit of grease on there and we'll get it going. The pipe is a little deceiving, just so you guys know. this this has a bigger diameter than it does on the inside so it's a step it has like a step lip this is where it seats in not here okay guys just so you guys know you see that lip right there okay that kind of threw me off when I was putting it on I'm like huh it's not lining up but now it works I thought I got the wrong size or something
right. a tight fit. Make sure you have the power range One big thing you guys got to remember as well, this is an aluminum head, okay? You cannot ratchet anything onto this because you're going to cross thread it. You make sure this thing goes in by hand. Do not use a ratchet to tighten anything down by hand. I mean, tighten anything down until it's, until you get at least like five to six threads on. So I will promise you, you will cross thread this. It's not hard to do that. specifications right here is 25 plus 5 25 Newton meters plus 5 we'll get you these three right here and then these three as well give me just a second before I give you guys the the torque specs we got to finish one more thing we got to do the water pump now the water pumps on these engines are independent to the timing. They run off actually off the accessory belt. Okay, so what's really nice is a simple job. It's three bolts, actually six bolts in total to get it all mounted and stuff. You got You also got to remember you have the, the pulley bolts as well. But the, there's three main bolts and then there's three for the the pulley. Um, there's an O-ring that sits inside of here that seals it on the surface. Um, now. As a personal recommendation, especially on these water pumps and these old ass blocks, you can go one of two ways. Put some RTV around this and then seal it. But you want to do water pump RTV. And uh, I would probably do it on the actual uh, machine surface so you're not slapping it all around here. Um, it's okay to put it on the machine surface itself right around here because it doesn't affect the weeping hole that's built into this if the water pump fails uh, it just seals on the around it and uses the secondary as an o-ring as a secondary precaution uh, all it is put this bad boy on the o-ring doesn't um, seat inside it seals around it so You just bolt it on and that's it. That's that's your water pump. There's nothing crazy about it. Um, again, as a personal recommendation, I would clean this surface as best you can and bolt this on. So that's what I'm going to do next. So we have the water pump now mounted. I don't have the pulley yet. I got to go find all that stuff later. So that's not as important. We'll get to this guy when we actually put the accessory bracket on and the alternator and the power steering and the AC. We might, or we got to figure out how to delete the AC. So we can get that out of the system, so that's out of the completely out of here because we're not going to be using the CM, obviously. Now, one really cool thing about this metal pipe that we used for this uh, for this project is that it has a secondary uh, outlet right here at the bottom, where you can un uh, unbolt it and use it for more water. Now, for you guys, if you guys are going to go turbo, this is a perfect coolant feed line. If you're going to use a uh, water cooled uh, and oil cooled turbo. 
This line right here pops right out when it's pressurized so you can feed it right directly into the back of your turbo and then have a return line. Um, to return coolant uh, back onto these engines, you just need to figure out um, uh, onto, oh, over here on this side, right over here, there's a, where you can return it right over here to the, the feed uh, outlet right here in the cooling system. But that's, again, that's for later down the road when we get to that point. Uh, we'll teach you guys all when we get to actually start turboing this car, where we have to feed coolant, return coolant, feed oil, and return oil. Those are the four major things when you start turboing in a car and how to get those taken care of. But that's done. We're done with this portion of the coolant system. Now we're going to give you guys torque specifications. So we're going to start off over here. So one, two, and the three bolts. Those are 10 Newton meters. Okay, guys. The three that go to the bottom is 10 Newton meters for the thermostat. Okay, so you have one, two, three, and then three down here to hold the thermostat housing. All right. And then we're going to work our way over to the actual, where is it, the, um, so this guy right here, the oil filter cap, 25 Newton meters, plus five, okay. The water pump, the three on the water pump itself, Uh, those are 15 Newton meters for the three that are on here. One, two, three, 15 Newton meters. And the last three, which are on the actual housing itself. is 25 Newton meters for these guys right here. And these also have Loctite. So Loctite on these, and that's it. And then this guy's 25, 15, and 10 on all the coolant flange components. And that, everybody, is how you do your, pretty much your cooling system on your 12 valve VR6. Don't forget your knock sensors on the front and back of the engine as well because you're going to have a heck of a time getting that in there if you don't do that, okay? Peace out, everyone, and have you guys yourself a wonderful day.